Welcome back. In the last lecture, we were discussing that whether there are infinitely uh, many primes in the two different corsets of uh, uh, 4n plus 3 and 4n plus 1. We, we proved just by following Euclid's uh, approach, uh, we could prove that 4n plus 3 has infinitely many primes. Now, what is, what can we say about 4n plus 1? So, if we apply the same uh, uh, method of Euclid, uh, then we will take uh, p 1 to p n are all the primes in 4 n plus 1, then we define p equal to 4 product of i from 1 to n p i plus 1. So, none of this p i can divide p. So, therefore, by the prime factorization, it will definitely have prime factors and all the prime factors, they are going to be of the form uh, p uh, 4 n plus 3. Now, what happens that if q 1 and q 2, this belongs to 4 n plus 3, then q 1, q 2, this is equal to, let us say 16 k 1, k 2 plus uh, 12 k 1 plus 12 k 2 plus 9. So, 9 I can again do it uh, k 1, k 2 plus 12 k 1 plus 12 k 2 plus 8 plus 1. So, this belongs to 4 n plus 1. So, we cannot easily get the contradiction the way we have got it for 4 n plus 3. So, now one need to do something, some other approach to show that 4 n plus 1 contains infinitely many primes. Okay. So, what are the other ways one can show that the primes are infinite? Suppose, for example, I collect all the primes and I do, I take a sum p prime. Now, if sum is finite, then Uh, number of primes will be finite. So, a priori we are not assuming that the uh, um, one of whether we have finite or infinite primes. Now, if this diverges to infinity, then certainly there are infinitely many primes, because if it is uh, only finite, it is a finite sum, it is a finite number. So, now we do not know about the series. So, what we look at it, let us say for s greater than 1, p s, where p is prime. Now, this is definitely dominated by summation over n from 1 to infinity of all the natural number n to the power s and this series is convergent. So, now for every s bigger than 1, uh, 1 over p to, to the power s this series converges. Now, what we are interested to see limit s goes to 1 plus coming from this side summation over 1 over p s. Now, if we can show that that is infinite, then we conclude that there are infinitely many primes. So, now this is uh, basically uh, this idea was by Euler and, uh, and it is a very famous function zeta of s for which is called the zeta function or if I uh, do it for s complex, then that is uh, 
uh, going to be called the Riemann zeta function, which uh, is a very, very famous uh, function in mathematics. Uh, and this is uh, 1 to infinity for s greater than 1. So, what Euler uh, proved is the following. So, theorem, this is by Euler. Uh, that zeta of s, this is the product of product over all the prime p 1 by 1 minus 1 by p to the power s. Now, this is here it the product can be infinite. So, what is an infinite product? It is similar like the sum suppose a equal to i from 1 to uh, infinity alpha i. What you define is that a n i uh, is the product finite product and you take the limit as n goes to infinity. Take the limit of a n if it exists and then we call it as a that is the infinite product. So, uh, and for s greater than 1. So, this uh, uh, the proof I will not give in glory details, but this is a kind of convincing that if you look at 1 by 1 minus 1 to the power p s. So, it will have a geometric series expansion. So, which means this is because 1 by p to the power s is less than 1. So, therefore, we can get that this is summation over n equal to 0 to infinity 1 by p to the power s n. Okay. So, now uh, that means, if I look at the product formally, if you are writing this uh, 1 by 1 minus 1 by p to the power s, then this is uh, nothing but uh, uh, let us say the primes are p j's primes, then j product over j for each p j, I can write this sum as uh, 1 plus 1 over p j s plus 1 over p j 2 s plus 1 over p j 3 s plus dot dot dot. Now, if you are taking the product, you can see that in the denominator, you are going to get uh, p 1, p 2, uh, uh, p 1 to the power some alpha s into um, uh, p 2 to the power some beta s, all these are uh, uh, alpha betas are natural number and every n if you are go taking. So, this is equal to p 1 k 1 up to p some p l k l. So, now this is going to appear uh, on this. So, so, hence for each when you are taking the infinite product. So, each product is going to come up with the sum of the product of all these things. So, now this is going to lie er, at the below. So, this essentially heuristically one can say that this is 1 by n to the power s. So, this is a bit of hand waving proof, uh, but uh, get yourself convinced with this. So, now uh, once you have this theorem of Euler, then you take the logarithm of zeta s, then this is going to be minus summation over all the prime p log of 1 minus 1 by p s. Now, log 1 plus x, if you write down the series form, then this is log 1 plus x is x plus higher order. So, that means you are taking something like I will denote big O of x square. 
So, so this becomes if you do that, so this is minus summation over x is minus of 1 over p s plus some higher order of 1 over p 2 s. As you can see that uh, any higher order 1 over p 2 s, so this, this is uh, going to be a bounded quantity. So, hence this is summation over 1 over p s some finite number. So, this is what is the now log of the zeta s. We know that zeta s this converges to infinity as s converges to 1 plus because this is 1 by n series. So, therefore, on the right hand side obviously, this is a finite number and this side when you are taking limit this is going to be infinite. Uh, therefore, limit summation over 1 p s s goes to 1 plus that has to be infinite. Otherwise, this is a finite number and this. Okay. Uh, so, that is what proves that the summation over 1 over p heuristically is infinity. So, therefore, it contains uh, infinitely many primes. So, this is another approach to show that there are infinitely many primes. So, let us adopt this approach to prove for 4 n plus 1 contains infinitely many prime. Okay, so, now we have 4 n plus 1. Now, consider the group z star of 4. Now, this is a finite abelian group. And how many elements are there? By the way, this is 1 and 3. So, these are the two elements. Therefore, how many characters, distinct characters will be there for this group? There will be two characters. Namely, the trivial one gamma 0 and gamma 1. So, let us take gamma 0 of n, this is equal to 1, n belongs to z star of 4. And now, gamma 1, 1 is the identity, so it has to go to 1 and gamma 1 of 3, now it cannot go to 1, then it will become a trivial character. Now, character is going to take the value, so this is going to be minus of 1. So, this is another character what we are going to get. Okay. So, therefore, what I do is that I extend gamma 1 to whole of z by a function z to t, which is defined as chi of n this is equal to 0 if n even and 1 if n belongs to 4 n plus 1 and minus 1 if n belongs to 4 n plus 3. So, this is called a Dirichlet character. So, now we can see that it satisfies if I take n and m, then this is going to be suppose if both n and m are even or one of them is even, then n m, n m is even. Uh, this is equal to 0 if 1 of n or m is even. So, this definitely whatever is the event that we can take as it will take the value 0. So, this is chi n. 
Now, if both of them are odd, odd. Now, there are various cases n can belong to 4 n plus both m and n belongs to 4 n plus 1. So, in that case what we have noticed is that n m this is going to belong to this belongs to 4 n plus 1 therefore, chi of n m this is equal to 1 which is equal to chi of n chi of m. Now, if n belongs to 4 n plus 1 and m belongs to 4 n plus 3, then what we are going to get n m this will belongs to 4 n plus 3. Therefore, chi of n m this is equal to minus 1 which is equal to chi of n which is 1 and chi of m which is minus 1 and also if n belongs to both n and m only other case left is 4 n plus 3 then we know that n m belongs to 4 n plus 1. Therefore, chi of n m this is equal to 1 which is equal to minus 1 into minus 1 which is equal to chi of n into chi of m. So, this satisfies the group operation here is the multiplication on z star 4. So, this chi is extending the homomorphism and it uh, um, uh, respects the multiplication on z, st z star 4. So, now what Dirichlet did is that so, he wanted to generalize the Euler's formula. So, this is uh, so he defined a function for s greater than 1 L function L s of chi. So, that is defined to be n equal to 1 to infinity chi of n by n to the power s. Now, as you can uh, see that uh, if you want to write L s of chi, then this is uh, basically is 1, uh, n equal to 1 is 1 and uh, 2 it is 0, chi of 3 is minus 1, minus 1 by 3 to the power s plus chi of 4 is 0, chi of 5 is 1 because it is 4 n plus 1, 5 to the power s minus 1 by 7 to the power s like this. Now, this is an alternating series which converges, uh, so there is no issue. So, one of the very non-trivial theorem Dirichlet proof. is that summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity chi n by n to the power s this is equal to product of p 1 over 1 minus chi of p by p to the power s. This is the analog of Euler's theorem uh, proved by Dirichlet. Uh, Unfortunately, we uh, the proof uh, is beautiful. Uh, at this point, we are not planning to give the proof, uh, but first let us see that assuming this statement, what we are going to get. Okay. Uh, so as you can see that. Uh, uh, if we take for p equal to 4 k plus 1, then we are going to get uh, this side is 1 by 1 minus chi p is 1, 1 by p to the power s and uh, yeah. So, uh, and all this if we look at the LHS, 
then chi of n at 0 for n is even. Therefore, this boils down to n odd chi of n by n to the power s. This is equal to if n belongs to 4 n plus 1 chi of 1 1 by n to the power x minus summation over n belongs to 4 n plus 3 1 by n to the power s. Formally, we can see that this is what it is happening and uh, yeah. so now uh, let us calculate L 1 of chi because we want to come s to 1 because s greater than 1 we have defined. So, L 1 of this is going to be uh, as we have 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 so on and so forth. So, this where do we get this this number. So, this uh, if we write down 0 to 1 d x by 1 plus x square then this uh, for x less than 1 x square is less than 1. So, this is what is n equal to 0 to infinity minus x to the power uh, x square to the power n then this is d x which is equal to this a nicely convergent series. So, we can interchange the limit and the sum n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n integral 0 to 1 uh, uh, x to the power 2 n d x. So, which is equal to my n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n x to the power 2 n plus 1 by 2 n plus 1 0 to 1 which is equal to one by two n plus one. So, if n equal to zero, then this is one. If n is equal to one, then this is minus one by three, and this is n equal to two one by five minus one by seven, like this. Now, this side is is a known integral, which is tan inverse of x zero to one, which is equal to pi by four. So, this L one. Uh, is a finite number. So, uh, we can uh, we can take now the logarithm of L function. This is again just we apply the method of Euler. So, this is P log of 1 minus chi P by P to the power s. Now, again the expansion of log 1 plus x is the x and plus the higher order term involving x square and all and that is the big O of x square. So, now this is uh, what we have got is that chi of p by p to the power s plus big O of 1. Now, this is nothing but summation over 1 by p to the power s p belongs to 4 n plus 1 minus summation over p belongs to 4 n plus 3 1 by p to the power x plus big O of 1. Now, as s goes to 1 then this log of L s of chi this goes to log L of 1 of chi. Now, this is this is not equal to 0, this is not equal to 0, therefore, it is a fine log L 1 chi, we have seen that it is not equal to 0. Therefore, this is a finite number and now look at the right hand side. 
right hand side is that if this is uh, if this this guy if this is a finite number then this is a finite number and already we know that as s approaches to 1 this goes to infinity. Therefore, left hand side is going to be a finite number and the right hand side is going to be infinity that is not possible. So, only way we can get that uh, this is a finite number provided both of them they are infinite. Thus, so therefore, there cannot be finitely many primes of the form 4 n plus 1. So, as a matter of fact, there is uh, nothing uh, uh, wholly specific about this 4 n plus 1, 4 n plus 3. We can ask in general, suppose I have q n plus l, where q and l g c d is 1 and l is less than q, uh, l less than q, because everything I can write it, uh, every number in the q n plus l. Now, the question is that does this contain infinitely many primes? That is the question actually originally Dirichlet had asked. Now, like the toy model like 4 n plus 1, one can do the similar process, but much more complicated. And here in this case, instead of z star 4, we will get z star of q. Now, what depending on the q, we have the cardinality. So, now we will get that many, suppose the cardinality of z star of q is equal to phi q, some number, then there will be this many phi q number of characters. Now, what one do is that one extend the characters of this to whole of z, then one prove a theorem like the Euler product formula and then you look at. So, now the L function would be like this. So, one the most important thing is that there you know we need to show that L, uh, we can easily get that L 1 of chi is not equal to 0. However, to here to show that L 1 of chi we need to really work hard and to show that this is not equal to 0. And uh, here another problem is going to come is that now the character they are complex valued. So, we need to define the logarithm of the complex valued function and uh, so on and so forth, but uh, progressing in the same fashion if we can catch hold of if we can prove the Dirichlet's theorem, then one can show that there are infinitely many primes here. So, again Dirichlet showed here that there are and the proof is definitely very involved. And, uh, um, we may not see in this course the proof of the Dirichlet theorem. Thank you.